welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk, as we continue in our relatively new study on the book of Amos, the prophet Amos. So uh, we've had an introduction, and then we started to get into it, but just looked at the first two verses. So we'll continue on from there. Today, in this very important study, which is very relevant to our times today, but before we do that, Mark is going to ask the Lord's blessing on our time together today. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for your word and just be with us now as we try to glean some stuff out of it, your, your good word to apply to our lives and to give freely to others. Amen. 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 Okay, as I said, um, we had, in the last study, we looked at the first two verses of Amos. Mm -hmm. And as I say, the reason it's important is because you're going to find that while God sent Amos from Judah down south to Israel to prophesy, his message was for Israel specifically at that time. Mm -hmm. But his message is to us for all time, but particularly in these times. Amen. You're going to find that, I, uh, that Amos is a last day's prophet. And as I've said, as we started this study, I really believe that this is a time that God is going to raise up prophets. It's not so much about building churches, raising up pastors and teachers, as much as it is about raising up prophets who will call out to the people of God to repent and prepare for the coming of the Lord. Okay, we're going to start uh, now in the third verse. Mm -hmm. How would you like to read that, Alice? Sure. Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not revoke its punishment, because they threshed Gilead with implements of sharp iron. Keep going. No, for three transgressions and for four. Mm -hmm. That expression kind of implies that there were many transgressions. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, this is not an uncommon turn of phrase in the the olden days, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Six things says the Lord hate, yea, even seven, seven are an abomination. And to Job, uh, in Job it said, from six troubles he will deliver you. Even from seven, evil will not touch you. So it's like this first number and then the second. It's, it, it's a way of stating yes, that there are many. There's a lot, all right? Now, the judgments here that are listed, and we're not going to, I don't think we're going to go into all of these in detail. I just want to get an overview of these. Mm -hmm. His judgments are against Syria, verses 3 and 5, okay. against Gaza, the Philistines, in verses 6 to 8, against Tyre, 9 to 10, Edom, Ammon, the Ammonites, and the Moabites. Okay, and it'll go on, but I'm going to stop there for the moment. Mm -hmm. So, it starts saying, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus, for four I will not, and you said revoke its punishment? Yes. But my footnote has... A Speak up. <clears throat> I said my footnote has um, head... No. I will not head? No. I, I think your, your, your print is too tiny, and that, yeah. my goodness. Oh, great. I'm sorry. Cause it to turn back. Right. I was in the wrong place. Yeah. All right. It doesn't say, I will not revoke its punishment. The word punishment does not appear in the Hebrew in any of these verses about the, the judgments. Okay? So what it's saying, and I think... The King James says it'll turn away from, from punishment. But like I said, the word punishment is not in the Hebrew at all. That's just kind of added. Right? The word punishment doesn't appear there, but the Lord God is obligated to watch over his word to perform it. That's what he said through the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1.12, right? Mm -hmm. He's obligated to watch over his word. And as Jesus said, in John 10, 35, God's word cannot be broken. Yes. All right? So when God says something. It's done. It's done. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to read now from, I want to read some verses from Isaiah chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 6 and read through verse 12. Well, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will fall limp and every man's heart will melt. And they will be terrified. Pains and anguish will take hold of them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look at one another in astonishment, their faces aflame. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel with fury and burning anger, to make the land a desolation, and he will exterminate its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not flash forth their light. The sun will be dark when it rises, and the moon will not shed its light. Thus I will punish the world for its evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will also put an end to the arrogance of the proud and abase the haughtiness of the ruthless. I will make mortal man scarcer than pure gold and mankind than the gold of Ophir. And, and by the way, the word punished does appear there in the mm -hmm. Hebrew, okay? So do you get this? This is, again, a last day's statement. And he's going to punish the world. He's going to punish the iniquity of, of the wicked. He's going to put an end to the arrogance of the proud. So he's going to punish the world for its evil, mm -hmm. the wicked for, wicked for its, its iniquity, the proud for their pride, and the ruthless. Now, the Lord's choice was made when he spoke this to mortal man. Okay? So it's a done deal. This can't be revoked. God's word can't be broken, right? right? But mortal man may still have a choice, right? In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, and I'm sure most of you know this, God spoke and said, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live you and your descendants choose life. Choose. So even though God is speaking this to the nations, individual humans still, at least at the moment, have a choice. Choose life. What's life? Well, Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Choosing life is about choosing Jesus Christ. Because he has chosen you, right? If there is still yet time. Mm. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Life is fragile. I can remember sitting years ago with a, with a friend of mine. We were talking about having shared the gospel with somebody. And that person, a relatively young person, went out and was killed in a motorcycle accident that afternoon. You don't know. Life is fragile. It truly, truly is. So, you know, I, before I was saved, I had this concept of, well, I, I want to go to heaven. And my religious opinion of heaven was, you know, what I'll do is I'll wait till I'm like old, old, old. I am old. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait till I'm old, old, no comments. I'll wait till I'm old. And, and just, just before I go, I'll confess and repent. But I'll do whatever I want for all of the years prior to that. It doesn't work that way yeah. because you don't know. You don't know when God will require you and call you. The, uh, the other fallacy in living that way is true joy is following Christ. Yeah, but the world doesn't know that or the world doesn't believe it. Yeah. And they should know it if the church is being faithful to proclaim it because we are to bring the word of God. And Jesus Christ said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. He came that we would have joy, and that our joy would be made full, all right? But remember, let me just, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, when Paul said, for he says, in a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And then it says in Hebrews 3.15, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, all right? You don't know. If you hear his voice today, 
And if you if you don't have a right relationship with the Lord God Almighty and you happen to be hearing this somehow, mm. you better understand today is the day of salvation. Today, if you're hearing his voice, if the spirit of God is speaking to you, don't put it off. Do not put it off. Respond to the call of Jesus Christ in your life. The purpose of this right now in, in regard to God's going to bring judgment in the end days on all the nations, right, is that choosing Jesus will result in you not being part of that world that the Lord will punish. Right. For, for you are to be in the world, but not of it. Yes. That's what Jesus said in John 17, 16. He said, speaking to the Father, praying to the Father, he said, they, us, are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. And those who repent and accept the atoning work of Jesus, the life, are no longer counted among the wicked. And he's going to punish the wicked. But if you accepted Jesus Christ, you're not counted among the wicked. Where is that? Where did you read? Right on my little note that I made myself today. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I will give you a scripture verse. Is that okay? Yes. And the scripture verse I'll give you is this. From Romans chapter 1. Okay. I'm, uh, not Romans chapter 1. Okay. <laughs> from Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Right? Okay. And 2. There is therefore now... No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And the King James goes on to say, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, you have been washed clean by the shed blood of the Lamb, by the atoning work of Jesus Christ. There's no condemnation. You're not part of the wicked. We are the redeemed of the Lord, and we're to say so, right? Right. So, and those who are in Christ Jesus have no cause to fear the punishment of the proud. For we have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is expressed clearly in Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5, where it says, Have this mind in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And finally, we, the bondservants, the remnant, cannot be counted among the ruthless. Mm. King James says uh, terrible. Because we are led by the Spirit of God and the teaching of Jesus to love not only those who love us and who we count like us, but Jesus said, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5, 44 and 45. So we're not the ruthless because we're filled with the love of God. Mm -hmm. So says, blessed be the meek. It says a lot of things, yeah. but uh, they, all, they all go to that issue, okay? That, do you understand that we're different in the world? Yes. Why? Because we've not been born of flesh and blood now. You've been born again, and you've been born again of your Father who is in heaven. You've been set apart. Absolutely set apart and made different. Yes. So we don't have to fear <laughs> the judgment of God here or the punishment of God which does not mean that you will never experience the discipline of God. Right. Because there is a difference between discipline and punishment. Mm -hmm. Oh, how I wish the world understood that. Yes. Because they have the world and the church has seemed to accept this greatly, to wipe out the concept discipline. of discipline or being a disciple. disciple. Right. Because that's too harsh. That's too rough. The fact of the matter is, it says that God disciplines those whom he loves. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't love you, you're not a son of him. You're not a child of his. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's not punishment. It is training. Yes. It is training in righteousness. That's what discipline is. Okay? It is correction. Discipline, encourage what's being done right, and discipline corrects what's being done wrong. Mm -hmm. It's about training in righteousness. We should seek. David sought discipline. He prayed for discipline and said, let not my head reject it. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
that's that's the attitude that we have. To, that's the attitude of the of, of the righteous. It is a humble attitude yes. when you recognize that you you need God's training in your life. You need His discipling in your life. You need His discipline in your life. The fact of the matter is that the the devil has tried to change and corrupt. Not, um, I have He has not tried. He has been oh. All too successful yeah. in corrupting the language. So we have difficulty communicating. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Don't just put yourself in a place where you say, okay, I'm not going to reject discipline. Put yourself in a place where you, you pray yeah. for yeah. discipline. discipline. Yeah. The discipline of the Lord in your life. Yeah. Because that's the purifying thing. Yeah. That's when God comes yeah. and he's pointing out or showing or dealing with us of the things that are not right in our lives. And that's what we should desire. That's dross that comes to the top. Absolutely, the absolutely. Through the heat. Well, it is through the heat. Refiner's fire. That's right. God, you know, said Job. It's in the book of Job. You know, I know that when I've been tried, I shall come forth as fine gold. When you, when gold is tried, it is heated up. It's you know, put to the fire. So that, as Alan yes. said, the dross, the impurities rise to the surface where they can be scraped off. Mm -hmm. I can remember years and years ago, you know, when I was first saved, and I, I was praying, God, you know, I, I want to be what you want me to be, Lord. I want and I and I could. It says, you know, I don't try and hide my failures from the Lord. What a silly thing that would be. <laughs> so, you know, if, if there was something in my life that I recognized that was not right. I'd be praying, Lord, get, get help me get this out of my life. Mm -hmm. Help me deal with this or deal with it for me, Lord. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I know, it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, what's going on here? Oh, I can now I know what's going on there is God was dealing with it. Yes. He was bringing it to the surface where he could scrape it off and get rid of it. So I'm not, I'm not encouraging you to try and make your sin worse. But I am encouraging you to confess your sins one to another, to be faithful to confess your sins to the Lord, and to seek his discipline in your life, yes. his cleansing power of love in your, in your life. Yeah. All right. So all, all of that said, <laughs> the Lord is, as I said, he is obligated to his word, to the promises that he has made. He's obligated by his word to the promise that he made to Abram, Abraham, all right? Mm -hmm. He said, and I will bless those who bless you. And the one who curses you, I will curse. And in all the families of the earth will be blessed. Hallelujah. I am an adopted son of Abraham. I now worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son, the promised Messiah of Israel. <clears throat> if God's promise was to bless Abraham and his lineage, his descendants, right? Mm -hmm. And you see that those countries that we just talked about, that God is speaking against, is bringing his judgment on, they're all the nations that surround Israel. Hmm. Hello. All right. All you Ammonites, you Edomites, <laughs> you Philistines, you oh, Bingoites, yes. all of you ites out there that are not in a right relationship with the Lord, you are in perilous danger. And the only way to escape is to change, change fathers, mm -hmm. because the church, the, the curse of the father is, is passed on generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Change fathers. Take the father, accept the, the work of the father in heaven. Change countries. How can you change countries? Because our citizenship, it says in Philippians 3.20, is in heaven. Yeah. We're ambassadors for Christ. We are transformed. We're new creations in Christ Jesus when we accept his, his work, his life in us. All right? Yes. So, there's so much going on in the Mideast. And, you know, we can, we can talk about, we're not going to, but we can talk about Iran, we can talk about Iraq, we can talk about Afghanistan, we can talk about Russia, we can talk about China, the kings of the East, we can talk, talk about all of that, we can talk about all of the peril that, that seems to surround Israel. But the simple fact of the matter is we know that trouble's coming. If you know the word of God, you know that trouble's coming. Yes. But there is a deliverer mm -hmm. who will deliver Israel. Yes against all of the nations who happen to come against Israel. So so now what nations come against Israel? You got yeah yeah Gaza Gaza is mentioned here, the, the Philistines. Oh wait a minute. Wait a minute. It says in Zechariah chapter twelve verse three 
It will come about in that day that I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it will be severely injured, and all the nations of the earth will be gathered against it. Now, we've had this conversation in the past. I will tell you what the word all means in Hebrew. It means all. It doesn't say, well, there's a couple of exceptions. All the nations of earth will come against Israel. And therefore, all of God's power will come against all the nations of the earth in defense of Israel. You know, last week, I think we pretty clearly showed the connection between Amos and Zechariah regarding the last days. So what day is Amos speaking of? In chapter 8, verse uh, 1 and 2, here in Amos. All right, I'll read that to you. Amos chapter 8. Mm -hmm. Thus the Lord God showed me, and behold, there was a basket of summer fruit. He said, what do you see, Amos? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come for my people Israel, and I will spare them no longer. This is end time stuff. Were the prophecies true for the time of Amos? <laughs> Absolutely. But as so is so common in Scripture, <clears throat> what you have is prophecy that is true for the moment and the place, and prophecy that is true for all time and has a second second. Coming? Mm. Yes. I mean, you know, the, the coming of uh, Jesus, the Messiah, was well well prophesied. Yes, it was. But it wasn't just once. We have yet to see the second one, but it's, it's, it's coming. And that's true here in Amos. It's true in so many prophecies that God uses the situation of the moment to speak into it, to show what will be in later days, all right? So the great danger, the peril of putting off that decision to choose life. Uh, like I said, if you don't know Jesus, think about this, right? Because there is peril in putting it off, right? It's contained here again in that same eighth chapter of Amos. For the Lord spoke to Amos to say, Behold, days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. They will go to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. A famine for the hearing of the word of God. So in, in any event, I, I feel confident that the people of God felt pretty good. The people who were hearing this, if there were, you know, this this starts Amos's prophecy. Mm -hmm. Remember, he's gone from Israel, from Judah, the, the south, up to Israel and the north. Mm -hmm. And he is speaking prophetic judgment against the enemies of the people that surround him. Mm -hmm. I bet those Israelites uh, and any Jews that heard him. They were cheering them on, boy. <laughs> Don't you think? They were cheering them on. He's going to beat up our enemies. But then, but then, in verse 4, he goes on to say, Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah, and for four I will not revoke its punishment. Because they rejected the law of the Lord and have not kept his statutes. Their lies also have led them astray, those after which their fathers walked. And then I'm going to skip for a moment, right up to verse 6, sorry. And then it says, thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not revoke its punishment. Because they sell the righteous for money and the needy for a pair of sandals. So later he'll say to, to, to Israel, this is Amos, right? God speaking through Amos. In the third chapter, he says, For you only have I chosen among all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. In chapter 6, I have, God. thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions Gaza. of Gaza. What did I say? Israel. What did I say? He said Israel. 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 
In, in two, I said two six. Two six. Oh, two six. Sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm in one six. I'm in one, yeah. Hold on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Pay attention. Yes, that's there. Israel. That's good. Okay. okay, this this deal that you only have I chosen among because God has chosen us and knows us intimately, all right? You know that Jesus told a parable and he said in here, from everyone who's been given much, much will be required. And to whom they entrusted much, of him they will ask all the more. We, the children of God, are have, we have a greater responsibility. Because you want to know something? Those sinners out there, they don't have the power. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. They don't have the power not to sin. No, they don't. Mm. They are under the curse of the law, and they cannot help but sin. Mm. The only choice they have is to accept the atoning work of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't have the power. You know, this is what, how many people do you know, actually, I mean, they make, everybody makes New Year's resolutions out there. How, how does that work out? Because they don't have the power to do that. And that's, you know, that's like, I'm going to lose weight or do something. But when it comes to sin, you, it, it is a curse that is passed on from Adam to Cain to, and it goes on generation after generation for all time until you break that curse by changing fathers. And you become a saint. When you go from sinner to saint. You, that's exactly what it is. You go from sinner to saint, all right? But because you are, when you accept that power of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. you now have the power. Remember, he, when we talked in the Thanks. book of Acts, mm-hmm. you know, Jesus told him, don't you, go, don't you leave here until power has come upon you. Right. We have, the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We have the power to say no to both the flesh and the devil. We have the power to resist the devil. Humble yourself before God, right? Mm -hmm. Humble yourself, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. They don't have the power to do that, but we do. And therefore, we are responsible to do it. We like to think that the problem out there is the sinners. The world is in such a mess because of the sinners. The world is in such a mess because of the Russians because of the Chinese, because of the Koreans, because of ISIS, because of this and because of that, because of the gangs. You know why the world isn't a problem? Well, let me just read you a verse, and I'm sure you've probably, I I would hope you've heard this verse before. If my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 The church is responsible. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are responsible to bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into every place. And Father, that is my prayer as we close this session, Lord God, that we would be faithful to do what you have entrusted us and called us to do, to proclaim your love, your atoning work, and the power of your Holy Spirit out into that dark world, to bring their light into that world. Lord, help us to be faithful to do that. In Jesus' name I pray. Well, we've done it again. That half hour blew by, so we'll see you next time. God bless you and goodbye. True.